I'm about to ruin all future collaborations with this company. Because I noticed there's something really weird going on with the company that sent me this. And this. What is going on here? So to figure this thing out, I had to do some journalistic digging. I will bring you with me down the path of investigation, but I will also tell you three reasons to buy a laser, two reasons not to, and whilst doing that, I'll also try to make an entire project using only this laser. And at the end, I'll tell you if I think this laser is worth buying. Let's get started. You might have considered getting a laser, or you might not have. But if you did, you also realize they are expensive and that there's a jungle of lasers out there to choose from. Lasers are extremely versatile and as they're getting stronger, I think you can be able to do entire woodworking projects using only this. And if so, it might be worth the price, right? But first of all, let's settle the score. This is the Atomstack X30 Pro and it was sent to me by Atomstack. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky. Because I've received lasers from Atomstack in the past and I've been in contact with a guy from Atomstack.net. I recently saw that they were going to release this laser and I was actually talking to him about trying this one out. But then I received an email from someone from adamstack.com asking me to do a review of the A30 Pro. And I thought that's weird because both machines look pretty similar in terms of specs from what I could see. Actually the only thing I could see that differentiates them from each other is the color. Anyways, this camera and the cutting matrix that I have right here was sent to me by Adamstack.com. And the laser itself and the rotary which I also received came from Adamstack.net. Initially I was supposed to receive everything from Adamstack.com including the A30 Pro. But they didn't have that in stock so naturally I reached out to my guy at Adamstack.net who agreed to send me the X30 Pro along with the rotary. It might not seem that weird yet, but let me tell you, it gets weird for real. So in order to figure this out, I tried becoming an investigative journalist to find out the truth about Atomstack. But more about that later, let's start by doing some actual work. So the first reason to get a diode laser is just this. It's fairly easy getting started. The manual for this one is really good and the full assembly took me like 30 minutes. But then again, I was also recording whilst doing it, so you might be able to do it even quicker. I bet you can be up and running an hour after receiving the laser, and included in that time is also the computer setup. But if you're just using the app, it might be quicker. Okay, so this might not be an entire reason for getting a diode laser, I get that. But it's nice to know that it doesn't take ages setting it up and that it's basically just plug and play. So after everything was assembled, I was ready to get started with my project. And this is what I have in mind. I've put together a list of items I think look cool and would be nice to have as a maker. And what I want to make is a small box of stuff. Let's call this the MakerBox 1.0, the prototype. So in preparation for this, I designed a box in Fusion 360 that could be laser cut. It's a simple box, but I want to decorate it and make the inside look awesome. But first I need to cut all the pieces that make up for the box. And I've designed this to be used with a 3mm thick material such as MDF or plywood. I have the matrix at the bottom that will let the fumes out of the bottom when cutting the MDF and that will minimize the charring on the wood. When cutting there are a couple of things you can do to minimize that. One other being using air assist. And what I really like about the machines from Atomstack is that they come with the air assist included. And the air assist itself looks really awesome, but it also works really well. I use Lightburn with my lasers. It's a paid software, but it's really good. It's a one-time payment, but to me it's worth it. But there are free options as well. Anyways, I imported my SVGs into Lightburn. I wanted to do both the cutting and engraving at the same time as it minimizes the room for alignment issues. So in Lightburn I had it set up to do both the cutting and engraving. Atomstack has a chart on their website that helps with the speed and power settings, so I just went with them. Then I was ready to do the first pieces. So while the laser is doing its thing, let me talk about the weird thing I encountered with Atomstack. You see, Atomstack has been my go-to laser brand for a long time now. I've received lasers from both Xtool and Orter in the past as well, but I've kept the Atomstack ones because I like them the most. Sure, Drew, I think the X-Tool one looks better as well, without doubt. 
toe in the marketing from Adam Stack seems a bit weird and off. Um, I get a bit confused because people tend to ask me about the Atom Stack lasers and I want to be sure that I'm referring them to a trustworthy company. With that said, it's important for me to tell you the truth of what I discovered. I knew I had to ask them about this thing, so I reached out to my guy at atomstack.net. That page doesn't even have the Atom Stack A30 Pro. But I also reached out to my contact at atomstack.com and I asked them both the same question. What is the difference between the A30 Pro and the X30 Pro? And I also asked them what the official Atomstack website is. Because when I search for Atomstack official on Google, there are a ton of options. Like this one for instance called atomstackofficial.net, which got a trust score of 1 out of 100. And that's not a place I want to buy a laser from, right? And even though there are scammers trying to claim to be Atomstack, I've never seen it in the extent it is around Atomstack before with any other company. So what is what here? I did receive some answers that are making this thing even weirder. I'll get to that in a bit, but first, this is the second reason to get a laser. It can do both cutting and engraving, and especially this one since it's crazy powerful at 30 watts. But that also comes with a price tag, of course. The machine alone, currently when recording this video, is $13.99. And with all the added accessories, it's closer to $1,600. And out of the accessories, I tried the camera out and you don't need the camera at all. It's like a fancy accessory. You can record with it, but all the setup time for the camera was too much to even bother, according to me. You are able to line everything up perfectly in Lightburn as it is. You can even see where the laser is going to engrave before it started. So maybe it might be good, but according to me, I don't need it at all. There are of course lasers with lower power wattage that you can get much cheaper. I've tried Atomstack's 20 watt laser in the past and it can also do both cutting and engraving. The stronger the laser, the deeper it might be able to cut and the faster you might be able to go when engraving and cutting. But if you just want to do engraving, you can get a cheaper machine with less power. The MDF for the box was engraved and cut in no time. And I'm really impressed with the finish of the MDF after it was cut. To put the box together, I just used CA glue and some activator and that worked just fine. I wanted to engrave the flashlight as well, it's made out of aluminium and for that I used a rotary. You have to do some changes in the software settings but other than that it's quite easy using a rotary. I tried engraving the pen as well but since it's made out of plastic it didn't turn out that good. And as for the wireless magnetic charger which is also plastic, it, I did engrave it but it doesn't look that good if to be honest. <laughs> I, I shouldn't have done that. But now it's done. To have the pieces lie neatly in the box, I had some EVA foam that I could cut with the laser. And then I could just glue all the EVA foam pieces together and that makes for a perfect organizer inside of the box. And this is the third reason to get a diode laser. They're just so versatile. I mean, you can do both cutting and engraving as we discussed previously, but it also handles a wide range of different materials. I mean a CO2 laser does that too, but they're usually a lot more expensive and require more setup with exhaust, while this is more of a plug and play option. For the top of the box, I wanted to use a piece of leather with a logo. So with this laser, I can both cut and engrave the leather. To create a nice logo for the Maker Box, I went to the sponsor of this video, Kittle.com. They have this really nice interface for creating logos. When you open up the website, you get all these categories to choose from. You can do search for your idea, or you could start a new project from scratch. They also have this text editing where I can choose font size, letter spacing, line spacing, color and style. But in addition to that, it also comes with a library full of ready to use designs. And that's what I'm going to do for this project. The pre-made designs are already cleared for a license, so you can basically use this to create a logo for your business. And kind of like Photoshop, I can work with layers, which I'm used to. So that's a really nice feature. The really neat thing about using this is that it takes very little time. I mean, I'm doing this in real time right now. I can visually see all the nice pre-made designs instead of trying to come up with one from scratch. I think I'm going to go for this one and I might remove some of the features here. And instead I might add something that indicates this is a maker box. 
and it's really easy doing a search perhaps a wrench so I can just search for that here and add it to my design I can resize it to make it fit my logo and I'm just gonna copy the wrench and make two of them for a nice cross in the middle when I was pleased with my design for the logo, I exported it to my computer and imported it into Lightburn for laser engraving. You can of course export directly from kidol.com to an SVG and import that straight into Lightburn. But you can also export to PNG files which can be traced in Lightburn afterwards. I actually also used kittle.com for the text on the side of my box. I just created a new document, added the size of my side piece right in the software and then I could add some text. And I think a quote looks quite good with the cursive font, so I thought this one looks good. And that is how easy it is using kittle.com to create some really nice artwork. Thanks to Kittle for sponsoring this video and for making the maker box look even better. What? I managed to make an entire project using only the laser as intended. And I think it looks really nice. I mean... It's only been a day. I mean, it's four o'clock now. I started shooting this video this morning, assembling the laser. So I've both assembled the laser and made this project in one day. And the only thing other than the laser I've used is actually the glue. So that's nice. So the first reason you shouldn't buy a laser engraver is this. The main downside of diode lasers are that they aren't enclosed. And there's nothing to protect my eyes other than the crappy glasses and the shield on the actual laser unit. And as they're getting stronger, I think you should be more and more careful with the lasers. Make sure to protect your eyes if you get a diode laser, but also your lungs. But because of that health risk, they do a lot in regards to security with these diode lasers. I mean, most of them have the protective glasses come with a machine. The laser unit also comes with its own protective shield or glass. There is usually a stop switch as on this one, and it has some kind of gyroscope to protect you from tilting the machine. Now, even though there are some security thinking around these machines, we're only as good as we are forced to be. Meaning that if there is not an enclosure for the machine, I'm not going to use an enclosure as long as no one forces me. I mean, if it came with an enclosure, I would of course use it. And the second reason is basically the price. I mean, it's so expensive. Is this really the best option? You should really consider what you need it for before buying it because of the price. The machine alone is $1,400, but I would suggest getting the cutting matrix or some kind of honeycomb under if you're, if you're gonna do some cutting. And you can actually get a decent CO2 laser for the same price, but they usually have a smaller work area than this one. So that's basically where the reasoning comes in. What do you want to use it for? So what about the atom stack thing? Now they did get back to me, and this is both interesting and weird. The, the rep from adamstack.com, who also sent me the camera and the cutting matrix, she said this. Adamstack A30 Pro and the X30 Pro are basically the same machine. The only thing that differs are the colors. So what my conclusion was. On the second question though, I got the answer that adamstack.com is the official website and that the other websites are authorized dealers. And she said, that's why I see a lot of websites. Hmm. But if I were to have a company with a brand name, I wouldn't let others use the same name as their website, right? I would say you can be a dealer, but your website needs to have another name. So I was really looking forward to the reply from adamstack.net. It took a while, but he finally got back to me. By the way, I'm probably ruining all future collaborations with this, but who cares? Uh, he said the same thing regarding the A30 Pro and the X30 Pro. Same machine, different colors. But he also said this. Adamstack.net is the official website. Other websites are just dealers. What? <laughs> Come on! Which one is it? So... I actually reached out to another one uh, on Alibaba because it has the comp you see pictures of the like the hallway and uh, the factory and stuff. So I asked them in the chat on Alibaba and they said uh, on the question which is the official website she said only here meaning the store on Alibaba. 
I mean, I could probably go on and ask more websites which one is the official website, but I would probably get the same answer. And this could potentially make them a bit unreliable. I mean, where are you supposed to go to get your Adam Stack laser? Nonetheless, I've never had an issue with the company in the past. They make really good lasers, but I will have to leave you with this. I can't tell you which one of the website is the official one, because I have no idea to be honest. But I can tell you that the sites that I've been referring to in this video are both serious and trustworthy websites, but for all the others, I have no idea. Maybe you can investigate this further, but this is as far as I got. So is the laser worth buying? I have tried a lot of different lasers by now. I've tried lasers from different companies and I've tried the Atomstack ones. And for the past couple of months, Atomstack has actually been my favorite go-to laser. That's the only laser I kept after all the reviews I've done. They seem serious and they do good lasers. They're also a bit cheaper than the competition. Especially cheaper than the other company that everyone seems to be talking about. I mean, this laser is amazing, it's all up to you now. But the result is that I was able to make this box, the maker box, the prototype, with all the maker tools inside of it, and I did all of this using only the laser and the services of Kittle.com. See you guys in the next video. Bye.